my name's Missy. I'm going to be doing the uh, social media 101. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if any of you have, have checked out our sessions before online with our, our past years. Um, we generally try to run this as a nice conversational thing instead of like me being an instructor up here pointing at things. So, first off, let me, let me gauge where we are with social media. Uh, this is basics, but we can talk a little more than just like setting up Facebook account or setting up a Twitter account if, if that's where we are. So, where are we? <laughs> Got a Facebook account and a Twitter account. Okay, that's, that's, that's a good start. Do you uh, have a... I do. I have a Facebook account that I use regularly. Uh, I have a Twitter account that is there. Done. I'm not really sure. Oh, okay. What to do with it. Okay. So, what I'm, what I'm hearing is we, we have it, we're not sure what we're doing with it. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Does that... For, for you guys too? Snapchat. I have a Snapchat. Okay. <laughs> well, at Snapchat, we're going to be doing a more in-depth with Insta content, which would be Snapchat, Instagram, and things like that, okay. tomorrow. So I'm, I'm going to try to keep it focused to... I just watch it. I don't... I don't, I don't. Yeah, we have, we have a girl um, who is very knowledgeable in, in Snapchat. Like, anything that I have that I need Snapchat, I go to her. Okay. So she's going to be in tomorrow doing that session. And if it's not on the... If it's not on the List it'll be on there because uh, we weren't sure whether she was going to be able to make it. But uh, yeah, so that's that's cool. Um, so we have we have Twitter accounts, we have Facebook accounts. Okay. I'm on Twitter. I don't know how. Twitter. I don't know anything about. Twitter. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I think. All right. So I guess, I guess we can start with Twitter. Sure. Okay. Uh, are we using Twitter for personal stuff or more for like business stuff? A kind of mesh of the two. What, what are we What are we using Twitter for? Well, I. Uh... I'm sorry. I, no, it's I'm at a toy show. Okay. I'm a big nerd. Um, so, sorry, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're so, among friends. <laughs> you know, um, so I do a little bit of, you know, what I'm interested in, and then I also try to use that to help fill into the event. Um, I don't really, I know I'm not posting as much as I should. I, I see other, I'm, I'm only getting into following other people more recently, like in the last year or so. Okay. I've been on this thing for like several years, and I okay. never could quite understand how to use it, and I might not still. Well, the one thing that, and I say this each year, you can look at Twitter and Facebook in two different ways, and there are different markets in both. Twitter is more of a conversation, like an instantaneous conversation. I'm talking to you right now, we're, we're talking about things, the conversation evolves, the conversation changes. Facebook is a little more static, because you have posts coming in from different people at different times of the day, uh, depending on how much it's getting reshared and everything. It's more of a long-term haul kind of thing, in the grand scheme of things. Um, I'm not on Twitter much during the day because of my day job. So when I jump out of Twitter, it's difficult when I try to respond to a conversation that was happening at 8 a.m. Because when I reply back to that Twitter thread, people are like, what is she talking about? It's like talking to my grandmother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the nice thing about it is Twitter has integrated. They, they realize that this is something that people do. So like they now have the, hey, this is what this twin believes leads from, and then you can click on the tweet and follow the conversation. And if this ever, okay, it did load, so um, I'm going to pull up my recent one that I just started, so you can kind of see some, nice name, I'm sorry, nice name. Yes. <laughs> All right. This, I'm starting a bakery um, in Beachview. And my business partner and I, when we were coming up with names, we wanted it to be something catchy, something really fun. So we went through, like, literally 15 minutes, just page full of names. And I, she said something. I was like, you know what? Bite me. Oh, my God. Cupcakes. Bite me. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my God. The uh, I was already taken, so we went with the Y for bite because we're digital. So... This is our stuff. Now you can see we have done 53 tweets. We have 18 people following us, or we're following 18 people, and we have 40 followers. This is a brand new account. Like I've only had this open for a couple of weeks. So this is where things are. Now, the way that we're doing this is it's kind of a hot pod of things because we're doing it as we're doing events, so I have a lot of pictures in my thing. Um, when we look over at my profile, over 
here. Um, you see that I've, I've retweeted a couple different things. I've posting all sorts of different pictures of my baked goods. We had people come to the Beach Street Farmer's Market because they were seeing pictures of this in their social media threads. Um, one of the other things, Twitter versus Facebook. Twitter, if you post and post and post and post and post, especially for like a business page, um, you can do it without any sort of problems with it. Facebook has started that if you post continuously as a business page, like for, for your stuff for instance, it kind of gets dinged because they don't want to have people just flooding the, the feed with their own stuff, you know, like every few minutes or whatever. So the best thing that you can do is find one really good post and post it for the day. Um, you can do smaller posts and things like that with on, Facebook as on well. On Facebook. On Facebook, yes. Um, so that's, again, that's one of the differences between Twitter and Facebook. Uh, so it, again, it, it depends on what you're doing as to which platform you do. Now, this is, like I said, our Twitter page, and you can see we've got all sorts of different tweets up about it. Um, when we're doing an event like the farmer's market, we tweet a couple of days in advance. We tweet the day before a couple of different times. We'll tweet um, the day of the event. We'll tweet that first thing that morning. We'll tweet when we're packing things up. We'll tweet as we're baking. So you know, you'll see different bits and pieces of the process for the baking. You know, so we'll have cake batter. So these are the flavors that we're doing today. Um, you know, we get the cupcakes iced, you know, the cupcakes that we're doing today, <laughs> so type of thing. So you, you get some different sort of stuff with it. Um, our Facebook page, you can see over here that um, we've got all sorts of different stuff here. Not now, go away. Um, you've got different things over here. So this post, for instance, this morning, in addition to being here, we're part of the Jagoff Summer Porch Tour. So I tagged the Jagoff in this post because he's going to get that notification and then he's going to be able to share it amongst his group. Um, they're doing this thing where the Port Authority is sponsoring and they're doing the Summer Porch Tour. So they've got, um, you know, kind of like a a little summer event type of thing with a cookout, essentially is what it is. And the one that I went to at a friend's place a couple weeks ago, they had store-bought donuts because he has a sweet tooth and he just wanted something sweet. And I was like, you got a couple more of these, I bake. <laughs> Can I toss in like a dozen cupcakes? He said, I've got them by all means. So these are the cupcakes that we dropped off this morning to him. And that's in our Facebook feed, that's in his Facebook feed. Um, it's, you know, we actually, the nice thing about this, I scheduled this at 7 o'clock this morning when I was dropping them off. So even though I dropped them off at 7 o'clock to him to get to the event, this posted 10 minutes ago. How'd you do that? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to actually log in over here. It is just Facebook magic. I loved it when he did this. Sorry, I'm usually logged in over here. Um, yeah, if you don't mind. Thank you, Terry. Um, Let's schedule some awesome. Oops. Yes. Uh, I appreciate it. Because I, I do this 90% of the time from my phone, so it's just like, my thumb gets me in. So when I have to know what password, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's the thing that I love about it, because it's mobile. I can, I rarely ever have my laptop with me when I'm doing events, because you have to set it up, you have to have it plugged in, you have to do this, you have to do this. My phone is constantly on me, and this is something easily you can do. <laughs> I'm not the only one. You want me to log in? Uh, I, have I have a few as well that could be used. <laughs> nice. No, like, I only have one, and I've never had it tell me to reset my password. 
Oh, there, there we go. go. Yay. All right. Take right. care. Right. You're a lifesaver. There you go. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> We're going to post some really fun stuff in Usually I log in on mine and then we just tweet and post that's, random stuff. That's okay, I'm logged in too, so if you post anything about it, I'll just delete it right away. Okay. Um, <laughs> so can you close the chat? Please? Yeah, I was just going to say we're going to. Maybe it's just because it's tiny. Turn off chat. Okay. It's fine. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, go away. There um, we go. So we've got this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write something where it says down here. And then and do, you, do we all know about hashtags? I know what they are, but I don't know. OK. They're a search option. And they're, they take everything and, and put it into a nice little searchable thing. So we're telling everybody to use the hashtag PCPGH11. So it's PodCamp Pittsburgh 11. So anything that's tagged on this, and I'll show you that in just a moment here, um, we're going to Now, we've got our thing here. And you see that it has the publish. Now, you can just click publish, and it'll publish it right now. But you can go to schedule. And then you can set when you want it to publish. So this is automatically setting it to 1027. Wait, how do you? Uh, I don't think I've seen publish. It's There's some. Post okay. Online. Yeah, it wasn't up there. Are you are you doing yours as a personal page or as a business page? I just a personal. Page. Okay, this is a business page. That's that's why. Um, but we'll go into the personal page in just a minute and show you how to do that. Um, so we have this publish. You click on that. You can schedule it. You can backdate it or you can save it as a draft. So we're going to go ahead and publish this. And you can go in here and edit this stuff. So this is putting me for 1027, which is about 20 minutes from now. But I want it to post in five minutes. So we'll go with 20. And then you get this little notice that says scheduled posts need to be shared between 10 minutes and six months out from when you create them. So that's why I automatically put in. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it for the 10th. 30 then, and then we're going to schedule it. So what that does is you see that you've got one scheduled post for today at 1030. You can click on the see post if you want to edit it or change anything with it. You can make that change before it goes live. Set it up and then go ahead and set it up that way. Uh, if you want to do a post right now, you can still do the post right now and it'll post live like it would with your personal page. Um, do you know if scheduling posts is available for our personal pages? Because I, I don't think you can. Okay. So years. scheduling posts is primarily for a business page. Um, were you going to say something else? No, I was just going to say because you, you know, you don't always. Um, you, you wouldn't need to schedule something for right. personal thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, that's just basic as far as that's concerned. Um, is there any, is there anything in particular that, that we can answer for you guys? Like, I guess it's more what I'm looking to. It's like me setting up your spotting stuff you might already know. Well, I know that I've been doing this for a couple of years, and I, I've got like maybe 28 followers. Okay, so you're looking to get more followers. Well, I only tweet every other day. Okay. I'm not doing it enough. Well, know. one of the biggest things that you need to do is interact. Because I can tweet to my little heart's content. Okay. If I'm not actually engaging and interacting with people, then you're not gonna you're not going to get that relationship that's going to have people interested just to share your stuff. Um, I can tag people to my heart's content when I'm putting stuff together. If I keep getting tagged in stuff because people want me to share it to my followers, that's something that actually kind of irritates me as a person. Because I understand that the only reason you're tagging me in it is because you want access to my community. You want me to retweet it. You want me to share it amongst my group of people. Why? Um, unless it's something that I'm, I'm interested in or something that I would do, I understand which circumstances I would be happily, you know, sharing content myself. You know, so, so it's kind of one of those things. Now, if it's something that makes sense, um, my husband does a lot of wrestling podcast stuff. So when he releases a DVD for one of the local wrestling feds, he'll tag that wrestling fed. He'll tag some of the wrestlers that were in that show 
so that they can reshare that content within their own group. It's cross-promotional because we're putting together the DVD of their product, and then we're selling that DVD for them to make money for them for that product. So it's in their best interest to share that thing. So us tagging them and putting that together makes sense to do that. Um, if you have a similar product line that you're, you're looking to cross-promote type of thing, it's good to do that sort of thing. Um, but it's, it's better to have a relationship, even if like you just get together at something like PodCamp. Dude, I have followed you for like, the last year on Twitter. I think you're amazing. You're awesome. But, you know, I just wanted to give you a shout out that, hey, you're doing a great job. That goes a long way. Um, and this is a nice conference type of event that you can actually put a face to a name. I knew Terry online for the longest time. And we met at PodCamp. Like, at IRL, we, we met here at PodCamp. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's some Lego for you, IRL. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just make that personal connection. Um, what's, what's the difference? When you say tag, you're talking about that hashtag yeah. thing. So sometimes I'll see the ampersign yes. with the name. So what are the differences okay. between that? If you're doing and how do I know that means they want me to share that or not? Um, if you're doing a hashtag, it's a way, to, like, search Twitter. If you go up to search Twitter, and we're going to search hashtag PCPGH11, what that does is everybody who is tagging, it might help place spell PCPGH correct. <laughs> it's, it's been longer. Right? Yeah. This is all of the people that are sharing the PCPGH11 stuff. So you have a variety of people. We've got... Um, Hell on Hills are tweeting us. We've got a Jagoff. Um, or I'm sorry, we've got... Me. So when Thank I get something, <laughs> on, so when I get something <laughs> on Facebook, and there's that. Yes. How do I know that, that that they want me to share that with that community? Like, when I get it, and if I go, oh, there's a pod camp, I, if I want to forward that to some friends, I'll just say, hey. Yeah, and, check it out. And I put um, their names in it, and then they see it. Like, it's, why do I do that? For different reasons. Um, it's primarily with, with Twitter that I do that sort of stuff because Twitter you're limited to 140 characters. So if you're putting in 20 different apps, that takes up a lot of your commodity for your what you're actually trying to say. Um, with the hashtag search, on the other hand, for, for, for this, it opens up to the community. So if you um, have this, mm -hmm. this uh, at PCG, the app is. PCHS. And you're trying to tell me on Twitter, mm -hmm. hey, there's a pod camp mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh. How do you communicate with me on Twitter? With that thing? Because I wouldn't even know to look that up. I've never even heard of that before. Okay. Um, well, it's a variety of different things. If you see in the... We'll, we'll go back to the, the main page over here. So I'm going to click on my home screen. And... Do you see that it comes up here as a hyperlink? So if you're looking for hashtag PCPGH, I don't know what PCPGH is. I can click on that hyperlink, because that's what that hashtag does. It makes it a hyperlink. It makes it searchable. So if I want to find out what PCPGH11 is, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on that, and then that's where I'm going to start seeing the conversation stuff. But how do I, how do I get that from you? Like, how do you tell me on Twitter that there's 9 million tweets on there? How do you say... Hey James, this is something I want you to take a look at. Um, because then I wouldn't know, like unless you put my name in it. It's well, and, and that's and that's just it. it. It depends on how you use Twitter. Um, myself, we have a lot of different followers for, for PodCamp. There are certain people that if I see them tweet, I pay attention to, to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, if people are tagging us in it, so somebody says, um, "Well, let's go to my my mentions." So we're getting a bunch of this is this isn't podcast account, but we're getting a bunch of mentions for you can jump in, Terry. I was gonna say which which one I can send you something to take in the Okay, well I'm, I've got this right here. Uh, this conversation I was brought into under the the bakery thing. Because Jagoff is doing like the, the event thing. So we sent him the 
Yes. Yeah. And you put the ampersand plus the sign, which is his, his tweet name, yes. right? Yes. Now, this right here, this is this is your Jagoff tweeting to me. So it's at Mikey PGH. So he's letting me know, hey, I'm sharing my I'm sharing your stuff with my people. So because I'm tagged in it, I get a notification that he has tweeted about me. Okay. Okay. So he's got that in there, and then it's got he's added me to the at your Jagoff podcast, which is specifically his podcast, has a Twitter account. The hashtag Summer Porch Tour is the specific event that we're doing, so kind of like PodCamp Pittsburgh. Everybody can hashtag that, everybody can connect it to it. Um, you don't have to be following Summer Porch Tour because there is no at Summer Porch Tour, or if it is, it's not us type of thing. Um, by at PGH Transit, so he's tagging their account in it. So if the at is an account. Right. The hashtag is an event or a thing or you know some sort of national Okay, so if you topic, press that topic, hashtag, thing, Mm -hmm. And it takes me to the page of like everyone that's talking about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. What am I? What am I tweeting? What am I putting? Is it gonna retweet that thing, or what do I put it? Somebody wanted to bring it to your attention is, is primarily what it, what it would have been. Or if you if you know that there's something, all right, like PodCamp. If you want to find out information about PodCamp, or you're looking for specific information for what's going on at PodCamp. We have three different sessions going on right now. So we have this session, we have two other sessions. If you wanted to keep track of what was going on in the other session, we, we mentioned the rule of two feet. You want to find out what's going on in the, what, one of those other sessions. You're pulling up the hashtag TCPDH11, and you're seeing what other people are talking about in the other sessions. So maybe somebody's doing something really funny in one of the other sessions, and you're like, I kind of want to go check that out now. You can go check it out. And because you look at that hashtag for the event, it takes everything without creating a specific podcast or without creating a specific account for the event. Mm -hmm. The hashtag acts as that; it kind of accumulates all that information. Um, the Olympics, they have hashtags for, for various Olympic events, various you know Olympic things that are happening right now. Um, so each of those hashtags you can, you can follow, and it has specific conversations and, and content to that without having to have somebody have created a a Twitter account and then managing that Twitter account to do it all. Okay, so you said, I'm, I apologize because I'm really green at this, but, um, but you were saying that on Twitter you can have like a live account, mm -hmm. and, but on Facebook I do that. Yeah. But I mean, they just post new things and I see what's going on in the conversation. Yeah. So um, what's the difference between the Facebook and the Twitter? There's not. The way that it's, I would say the biggest. Because I don't do a hashtag or anything. Like when I watch a football game, I have this thing on Facebook. Yeah. A group, and people put comments while we're watching football. Games. Yeah, which is one of the ways that, that people do it. Um, well, what, what would be the advantage or disadvantage of just going to tweet, Twitter and doing this? Kind of like, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. By all means, if you have something to interject in the conversation, jump in. Because I know it's really fun to watch like sporting events. Like I don't even have cable on the internet. And I'll watch face watch baseball games by just I have an entire group on my Twitter that's just the Pirates bloggers and right. uh, talkable talkative Pirates fans, and it's more real time because Facebook's often driven by an algorithm. So sometimes they'll based on what's like inter interesting to me, mm -hmm. and so I might get something in the middle of Steelers game put in from like three hours ago from mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, Converse shoes or something. Right. Um, Meanwhile, Twitter is just real time. So as stuff's happening, like uh, there's some ridiculous touchdown, you just see this list of stuff, usually in all capital letters, of people freaking out. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like it's all very real time. There's not a lot of extra stuff shoved in there. Right. And if you were to go to like a hashtag thing, Steelers, you usually usually will see like an official uh, hashtag P I T V uh, D E T for like last night. Yeah. And that's how you can kind of specifically follow whatever's happening there. Whereas in Facebook, it's a little slower, so to speak. You might see game recaps afterwards, but for like real time stuff, Twitter is kind of where it just is always happening. Because Facebook is filtered, so you may not even see it. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Facebook yeah. shows you what they want. Yeah. Yeah. And that's literally you'll get everything. That's really the biggest difference is Twitter is, is, as it's happening, like you said, it's real time. With Facebook, they keep trying to adjust their algorithm based on the people that you interact with, the pages you interact with, yeah. who do you like versus comment versus, um, you know, you, you're just kind of ignoring their stuff because they're trying to serve you 
the posts and things from your friends or the businesses that they think you're interested in the most based on what you've interacted with before. So they're, they're playing a guessing game, and that's where you'll get stuff. You know, Jane posted this 15 minutes ago, and then right after that is something that Bob posted four hours ago, and right after that is something, you know, your friend made on a comment on something that happened at a concert last night. So it's, it's very asynchronous because they're trying to show you um, what they think you want to see based on a really complex algorithm, you know, of, okay, well, 75% of your friends like this, but so maybe you'll like this, and you interact with this person a lot, so you probably want to see their posts more, um, whereas Twitter is really just as it's happening. So if you go on there now to see something that somebody tweeted four hours ago, you have to go through four hours. Yeah, and that's what I was mentioning to begin with. Twitter is more of an active live conversation. Right. Those conversations evolve and they change depending on who's jumping into the conversation and who's doing things. The conversation gets dropped four hours later, they're talking about something different. So that's the interaction for Twitter versus Facebook is more, like she indicated, it's think of it kind of like a, a cultivated area for, you know, all about you. Suggestions. <laughs> Suggestions. Like Amazon's yeah. recommendations or something like yeah. that. It's, it's, yeah. it's that the they, conversation they that you're trying to have. Yeah, they, they, they try it. I mean, you can go through and you can set settings to, to kind of tweak that a little bit more yourself, but their algorithm is evolving and changing to try to make that happen. Yeah, and I think even the, the more people that make a post, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be it'll elevate it. Yeah. On Twitter? No. On, on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. I mean, I use Facebook all the time, but it seems pretty easy to me. I mean, I do get my feeds from football games because mm -hmm. I'm on them. So literally, as we're watching the game, there's comments just flowing in from everybody. But I, I wouldn't know how to do that on Twitter. Uh, I don't understand all the, the little, well, like but, the uh, acronyms and the, the shortcuts and all that. Like on Facebook, we just put full sentences. Well, and, and the biggest thing is, is that you have the you have the commodity for it. Um, you're limited to 140 characters on Twitter, and they were talking about expanding that, but. That's one of the things I like about Twitter is it keeps it short. Mm -hmm. I, if I want to read some sort of long dissertation on something, I will go to Facebook versus Twitter. Uh, especially with my business page, I post a lot of the same content back and forth. And on Facebook, I can spell it out that, you know, this is, we're going to be at the farmer's market. Which farmer's market? We're going to be at the beachy farmer's market. The hours are X, Y, and Z. Here's the location. And I can tag you know, the, the different businesses that are involved in well, that. You know, she just said, somebody just said that, like um, you said about if there's a subject or whatever, it'll start feeding you those things on Facebook. Yeah. You know, I put, like, I'm interested in podcasts, I don't know anything about it. Suddenly I start getting a bunch of things on podcasting, but that doesn't do it on Twitter. Right? Well, the search it's, Twitter, you actually have to search. Yeah, um, you, so you've got the search button up here in the top, the search field. Yeah. So if you want to search podcast, now it's coming up with people that, have podcasts either in their name at this point or that they're, you know, somehow affiliated with podcasts. But if you don't know me mm -hmm. and you don't want to promote PodCamp, mm -hmm. how do I find that on Twitter? Somebody has to, somebody that you're following would basically have to do Because I found out about PodCamp on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. How did you find out about PodCamp on Facebook? Uh, Dave, because I'm friends with Dave. Okay. So if you were on Twitter like that, Dave would have sent out a tweet, or he would have liked one of our tweets, or he would have retweeted one of our tweets at some point in time, um, at which point it would have been in his Twitter feed, right. and then he would see it. You have to look for it. Yeah, right. you would have to catch yeah. it within that conversation, which is, again, people who are, on fate, uh, who are on Twitter are generally on Twitter periodically throughout the day, if not, like, perpetually. Right, it's repetitive. Yeah. They realize no one's going to see it. Yeah. Like, there is a short amount of time that someone will see it, so they right. repeat it at so a time. So, what is the advantage of that for, like, for, say, his business on Twitter? The nice thing about that <coughs> is on Twitter, events like this, right now, this is, a, this is a constant conversation on Twitter, especially in the Pittsburgh area. People are tweeting about... But, like, would he... Okay, maybe I should back up a little bit. Okay. If he had a sale on these toys, would mm -hmm. it be better to put it on Facebook or on Twitter? Oh, yes. Well, it depends on where your audience is. Well, and that's the thing. You have, you're going to have a different audience on Twitter than you're going to have on Facebook. Um, on Facebook, it's the people who can sit down and kind of do some stuff and then walk away from it, come back to it. Twitter, it's more, like you said, it's, it's going to have to be right there in the moment. 
So I, I know that a lot of businesses that we, that we deal with, um, they will use an outside service uh, right. for, for lack of a better term. That what they'll do is they'll have it that it connects all of their social media accounts, and they can actually go in and schedule when their Twitter is going to go. Twitter does not allow you to schedule tweets, but something like Hootsuite will. Mm -hmm. And you can connect those different accounts. So, um, again, my, my husband does the wrestling promotion stuff. So when he has a, there, there's an event coming up with a wrestling thing, he'll schedule a sale. And it'll send out a couple of different tweets, and it'll be about the sale. Um, last year, I think, somebody had indicated, somebody told us about Tweet Jukebox, either last year or the year before. And what that does is it takes your Twitters, your, your tweets, and it just kind of recycles them kind of like a jukebox. And it'll just recycle them throughout your Twitter content. So you're not actively having to do that. Mm -hmm. It's doing it for you. What is that called? Uh, tweet Jukebox. I think it's still a thing. <laughs> No, that's a legit thing. I mean, things, things yes. come and go, things come and go, and you never know what's, what's still current. Um, so that's something that kind of keeps it constant within the, the Twitter feed, but you're not actually having to go in and do it yourself and whatever. Um, conversations. Uh, the people that I've met, the reason that I'm sitting here is because of Twitter. I started on Twitter on my flip phone when it was texting to 40404. It wasn't an actual platform on my smartphone. It was a flip text phone type of thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's different how it can interact and do different things. And you have different markets. Utilize both. That, that's my suggestion, to utilize both. <laughs> how do you, go ahead. How do you stay abreast with these tools that come and go? You know, how do you find a new one? Well, the fun, the fun thing is I've learned a lot of PodCamp. And I'm not just saying that just to promote my event. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Um, we were teaching the social media session the one year, and that tweet jukebox that came up. Somebody told us, "Well, this is what I use." So we're, you know, pulling up our, our stuff. We're having a conversation after the fact. We got all downloaded tweet jukebox after that, and we were using it <laughs> because it was something we didn't know about, but somebody here did. Um, again. Uh, with many of the things that, that my husband does, one of them is a tech podcast. So he talks about local tech, he talks about national tech. So he has different search key phrase things that when, when something hits in the news or on you know social media or something like that, if it hits certain words, it pulls into a nice little search feature for him. And then he can look at that list and pull through different things. Um, he's constantly keeping up with what's new and exciting with tech stuff. Um, CMU. He follows CMU because CMU does a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so he'll see who they're interacting with, who they're talking with, and different things like that. And it's just kind of cultivated within. That's how he does it. Yeah. Um, we rely on other people, essentially. So <laughs> is it kind of informal networking virtually? And yeah, and absolutely. And talking to other people. Yeah, talking to other people. people. <laughs> go, go to events, hang out with stuff, see what people are talking <laughs> about on Twitter. And honestly, a lot of times, if there's a new uh, app or platform that's supposed to work with Twitter, they will promote it through Twitter. So if you're already on Twitter and people are talking, it's like that's how you're going to find it out. Things that are designed to work with Facebook, people tend to talk about them on Facebook. Or you have things like that, like Libsyn, where people, um, they're on one network, will kind of promote things that they use on another one. You know, like, okay, you're following us on Twitter, but hey, we're also on Snapchat. Well, Take for instance this right here. That way. This this is the I, I'm searching PodCamp Pittsburgh for, for Twitter, and we've got Elsie Escobar has tagged PodCamp Pittsburgh in this, letting us know that they're going to be Snapchatting today. So they're using Snapchat at the event today, um, and they're letting their followers know that hey, you can check out some of the stuff that we're doing, which a introduces you to this great event, and b keeps the content flowing and circulating, so you get live, real-time stuff going on, and you can check it out. You don't have to check out the formal video feed that we're doing from our website, but you can check out their Snapchats, and it's going to be the same sort of thing. It's going to be a different spin on the content. So so just an offshoot of what she was mentioning, mm -hmm. if, you don't, if you guys don't mind, could you just tell us um, what are the basic social medias and what they're best for? 
like, I have Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. I have a Pinterest account. Mm -hmm. I have a um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like, are, are people still using um, LinkedIn and Vine? And, um, they are. Um, and, and, like, what's... All right, like what Skype versus um, Facebook Lot? Like, what's what are the advantages and disadvantages? Or should I even care? It depends on what you're trying to do with it, to be honest. Um, Facebook Live is really nice because it integrates automatically with Facebook. You're not having to do the video over here and then link it back over to Facebook or do this and then send it back over to here on Twitter. It links directly into Facebook and it promotes automatically your, your people in your network. And it keeps, get it, it stays on there. Yeah, and then, it, yeah. then you have the option that it embeds it in and it's a saved video in there. So that's, that's perfectly good for that. Um, Twitter, again, if you're looking for a short message that you're trying to get out, Twitter's the way to do it okay. within a conversational type of thing. Um, Facebook is good for building like a, a network type of thing with you know their groups, with their feeds and different things like that. It, it's a good content source for that. Um, Instagram, if you have a lot of visual stuff, toys, Instagram, I've found, mm -hmm. is the way to go. Would that be better than uh, Pinterest? Because that's all pictures. Pinterest, Pinterest has been kind of a, the, the one that I'm still trying to figure out where it has its niche. I look at Pinterest like a community bulletin board. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how I look at it. Is I kind of go through and I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. I like that. I, I like a lot of cooking and baking. So I do a lot of recipes or I do a lot of like DIY crafting stuff. So that's where I go for that. And I know that's where I can go for that stuff. Um, I really don't integrate it much unless I'm putting my content out there for other people to check out, like my recipes, for instance. All, all long term, it needs to have a long term application to be relevant to Pinterest. So if you have yeah. toys that you always have in stock or they're always popular, that would be, you know, Pinterest is a good thing. And then you could break it down by categories. You can have, you know, um, action yeah, figures, figures versus, uh, trains, RC card, you know, whatever. Yeah, and even if you have specific genres within right. there, you know, like anime. Um, you know, comic books, Marvel, and stuff. DC, exactly. you, know, that, you know that kind of stuff. Instagram is great for, um, and you can always put those things on Instagram as well. But it's kind of more the the picture version of Twitter. It's it's yes. it's, um, it's it's perpetually fed. It's perpetually it's, fed. Well, it's gone to an algorithm now, which annoys me. Yeah. But it's, it's, that's like we're talking about from a few different people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's Instagram. Instagram. It has gone to an algorithm, but it's still better for things that are more that are more current. Mm -hmm. So you know, you could probably talk about the toy sale on Instagram if it's a couple, if it spans a couple of days and you're going to get some interest on that. But that's not the so best thing to pull out of Pinterest video. because stuff from Pinterest, yeah, people might come around to yeah, no. two or three years later. Yeah, so toy sale is not relevant to them, but uh, things that you typically problem. have in that's stock or how to care for your toys or to find hard, you know, like things like that that you might blog about that are of interest to that group. Um, and, and it's not only your stuff on Pinterest, so you can always you know, pin things from somebody else, maybe not your competitor, but, you know, of a similar interest. So if you're doing a lot of comic book uh, figures, pin stuff from DC and Marvel mm -hmm. about comic books, because that's going to draw in people okay. that have similar interests. So. Yeah, and if, if they're searching for DC action figures, they can narrow that down to Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and yours is going to pull relevant based on their search terms. And just make sure you put it in the in the description. Right. So, okay, we got Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Pinterest. Is there any other? Oh, the, LinkedIn, Google yeah, there's, Plus. There's, I mean, there's tons. 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 Start with one. Okay. Well, I'm on Facebook for sure. But but are you using it? Um, or do you intend to use it for business or for personal use? Well, right now, it's all personal. Okay. Okay. That's why I'm here. Well, and, and we can have a we can have a discussion. More after the facts with, with some specific stuff. Um, but LinkedIn, you said so. Link, LinkedIn that. is more business. Yeah, it's it's, I, I equate LinkedIn to do Facebook for business professionals. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like entirely business to business. Yeah, it's, it's I business. Have stuff. I've never even checked it. I don't yeah. even know. Well, it, it, it might not be anything that's relevant to you. Yeah, 
if um, you're just talking about football with your friends on Facebook, and yeah, that's that that LinkedIn is the place for it, exactly. unless you happen to be in the professional football industry, and then by all means talk to it. Well, yeah, well, exactly. But, but that you're there's there's not there's nothing that specifically says you have to use all the social media available. Find mm-hmm. out which ones work best for you, and tweak and hone them to, to how they work best for you. Um, I, so I'm starting. I'm gonna start a blog. Okay. And I want to get people to see my blog and okay. like to um, to get businesses also to see it. But I do a, like a Twitter business and a Facebook business. Uh, it depends on how you're going to be doing your blog. If it's going to be kind of an extension of your own personal thing, you can keep it to your personal. If it's going to be more of a business centered blog, you're going to want to separate it. Um, it's me more blogging about a subject, a topic, so, like it, like tacos. Okay. So if I want to talk about, you know, tacos, mm-hmm. um, and the places I've been, the places I'm going. Okay. I don't even know where. Like I want to start my blog, but I don't know what. Well, think of, think of it this way. Um, are you doing it as like you're just talking about it as you? Like, yeah. An individual. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't do a business. Okay. For it, unless it gets to that point where you want to have it separated from what you're doing. Okay. Um, if you're fine with just being on your personal thing, talking about it, I mean, I on my personal Twitter account, I talk cupcakes and stuff all the time, just because that's something that I, I enjoy to do is fun, creative. So just mix them on her regular account. If that works for her, that's fine. If she wants to separate it, you can separate it. You can create a completely different identity and specific branding for that. Um, actually, the session that's coming in next year is Blogging 101, Building Your Brand with Blogging. Yeah. I think you might be interested yeah. in that. That's the main reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, abs- yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that'll get kind of more into the building your brand stuff. Okay. And if you have any questions, just look us up. Like, you like yeah. talk to us or, or whatever. Um, I'm at Rebellious Flaw on Twitter. Um, or you can hit me up through PCPGH Twitter um, if you have any questions about anything. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're generally cool with answering questions, and I, I think we'll get a lot of them in the next session. Did you have a question in the back? You know, it, just going back to Pinterest very okay. quickly, um, are those links, when you pin something, is that a dynamic or a static link? And I'm thinking that you, put, you could almost put a virtual catalog of the toys and going down or comic books or whatever. It can be either. I was going to say, I think it's either. I've seen it. So it can go to just a static picture, or and, and then it doesn't go anywhere else, or that picture or becomes a link to a blog right. post or a catalog, uh, catalog okay. item. Yes, you can do that either way. Thank you. Any, any other questions? I mean, I know we were kind of across the board on different things just based on who had questions where, but if you have any questions, look for anybody in the green shirts. Look for Terry, she's not wearing a green shirt, but she, she's good and she knows it's going. <laughs> Love you, girl. Um, but yeah, just, just ask around because people people that are attending here have different knowledge and different, they use things differently. So just introduce yourself to somebody and start a conversation. See what sort of stuff they do with it and, you know, kind of kind of just work with the community. What, what, what is... Um... general demographic of each one of these things. Like, okay, so if I start a podcast, mm-hmm. are podcast listeners typically more on Twitter people or Facebook people? Or it depends it on the podcast. It depends on the so community. she's doing a blog on tacos. Mm-hmm. Uh, how would I even know that existed? I think that that would be a situation of, hey, I really like tacos. I'm going to do a quick Google search and see if there's anything that I can find out that people are talking about this. Or, you know, I'm going to search Twitter for, for fun tacos or something like that. So I'd have to be looking for yeah. it? Because Facebook throws me stuff I've never thought of before. Like, and and then with, with the conversational thing with Twitter, mm-hmm. I have followed people on Twitter because my friends have had a conversation with them. Like, who is this person? Because they're kind of fun. I... I they got me in stitches over here in this conversation. I don't know who that is. So then I pull up their Twitter page and I like stalk their their Twitter page. Right. I like this person. I'm gonna follow them. Um, so then when they start tweeting, 
they again start interacting with, with other people I'm like, those people are also awesome. Is, oh my god, I want to call them. Is Twitter linked with any search engine like YouTube um, they, is with Google? They they have a search option within Twitter. Search stuff. So, so like if I type in tacos into Google mm -hmm. and then it'll send me to like some YouTube videos of like how to make tacos or vegan tacos or whatever, but like if I was on Google and I typed that in, Twitter wouldn't start sending me stuff. You just saw the first tacos. option, didn't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just Google tacos Twitter. Yeah. So you get all sorts of different things, and obviously you get you get Taco Bell, you get different businesses that are doing Twitter stuff with taco relations. That's on Twitter. Yeah, that, uh, well, this is a Google oh, search. Google. Okay. I search tacos Twitter in Google. And this is what it kicked me up with. Um, Unless your Twitter would be like private, you whatever you tweet. So you specifically have to look for it on Twitter if you're looking for that. But mm -hmm. I'm saying like if, if mm -hmm. I just type in tacos to Google, mm -hmm. it's going to send me everything that right, has, right, including YouTube. Yeah, right? yeah. It is does. it going to send me Twitter? It could. It, it, could. Just, it just depends. Well, I just, I just, that is, right? I just Google search tacos, like what we're just literally talking about right wow. here. And the very first thing that it <laughs> gives us is welcome to Taco Bell. Killer taco spots, best tacos. Um, so it's giving me taco places because it thinks that I'm hungry and I want tacos. Right. Um, I'm trying to do right now. Well, my, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sounds like tacos. And I'm allowed about tacos, but it come up in yeah. yeah. That's your work, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're going to want to yeah. hit certain search things whenever you're blogging about it, and that's going to be covered in the next session. I know. <laughs> I'm off writing over here, sitting here waiting for me to, to shut up so she can get no, over here. I'm, 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 I'm lots of clothes now, so I'm just drinking. I'm just going to go to lunch. Who's a baby taco town here, bro? I'm, I'm getting locked in here for lunch, so I'm going to make sorry for me. I'm going to be drinking. There are no taco places. Is anyone else talking about it? No taco. There's no Mexican. In fact, Mexico should sue Pittsburgh for calling anything Mexican. So yeah, I mean those. It's for taco track. So to wrap this up, the, the best option that you can do. <laughs> uh, yes, the taco track. The best option that you can do for your social media is to just play with it and see what works best for your your company or your your specific situation. If you're finding that you're getting more following on Facebook versus Twitter, which actually my cupcake stuff, my my business partner follows the Facebook end of things. I do the Twitter end of things. And she's been very upset that the, with a slow incline on the Facebook follows. And I look at her and I'm like, well, tell it over here on Twitter, though. That's, that's the thing, is that it's instantaneous and it's kind of conversational. Twitter's workable for us. Other people, Facebook works better for them. So just find out what works good for you. And you could do what is, uh, Vine is part of Twitter, right? I'm sorry? Vine is part of Twitter? Is that correct? Like, yeah, I was saying, I think so, that was the like Twitter, you can now do a video, right? Vine is right? on Twitter, but it's not in the video. Yeah, it's, oh. it's not. It's, it's, so it's a list on separate. So but, if you put a video, if you had a video, like a short little video, you could put that on Twitter now. Yes. Well, you can do video but, in Twitter, yeah. So who's who sees it? Just It depends. Um, generally speaking, if I tweet from my account, I'm, anybody is anybody that follows me is going to be able to see that. Now, if somebody searches my Twitter account and they're not following me, they can still see it because I have them locked Well, down. you know, because she said, or somebody back here said that, um, like, Facebook, you don't always see those things. Is yeah. That, which is true. Because yeah. I've seen, like, I, I didn't know that video existed until, like, two weeks later or something like that. Yeah. But if you put it on Twitter, mm -hmm. only the follow your followers would see it comes down to if you're if you have a locked account or if you have a private account, only people who follow you can see. If you have yes. a public account, anybody can. I can, yeah. If you if you post a video and you like hashtag it Steelers, right? Uh, so it's searchable, and I go and I'm just following off the Steelers game, and I search Steelers has a hashtag, then I can see that video and watch it if you posted it. Maybe okay. I like that video. I was like, hey, I like your video. Then I would follow you because I'm like, because what she was saying earlier, oh, that interests me, right. and I'll probably look at the rest of your timeline and be like, okay, and I'll give you a follow. Well, to put it in perspective, I again did our taco Twitter right. Google search, and this odd effing taco comes up at the very top. <laughs> that is a Twitter handle. Okay, so that's somebody on Twitter. This person's Twitter account is not locked down because they're coming up with my Google search. Right. And yeah, there's some uh, yeah. very odd okay. tacos. So we're, we're going to click back off of that. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Um, 
<laughs> so yeah, that was a public account that I could get into, and I didn't want to go through the rest of the content because I wasn't sure what the content was going to be. It's out there. I can I can easily find it. If you have a locked Twitter account, you're not going to be able to pull it up. It's it's going to be locked and it's going to be protected. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I know I'm just dominating. Feel so bad. Well, but, we actually we're going to need to wrap up um, because our next speaker is here to to get settled and settled. Can I just ask one more question because it's something I'm not sure about Twitter. Well, I was going to say if you'd like to talk, we can talk about. Oh, okay. After. All right, sure. Okay. Well, thank you all for attending the the social media one. I hope that it was helpful. Um,